All right, guys, I figured one of the more interesting topics this season so far through three weeks of the season is what's going on with Bryce Young and, and why has the first overall pick of last year's draft already found himself on the bench and and really had a, a, an unfortunately underwhelming performance. You know, is it team? Is it scheme? Is it, you know, personnel, something he's doing? So I figured we'd break down his, his last game. This is uh, him with the Chargers, or against the Chargers. Uh, I've only been through the game once just when I input the data and cut it, so I, I've only seen it briefly. My initial thoughts were, were guys getting downhill, defenders being able to play downhill because they just did not, did not throw the ball vertically at all during the entire course of the game. And hopefully this time through we'll see is this a Bryce Young thing where he just wasn't comfortable throwing the ball down the field or was this a, a play-calling thing where he didn't wasn't given opportunities to throw the ball down the field because I don't remember, again, in my first run-through, seeing a single ball fly over a DB at any point. There was no post, no corner, no vertical, no 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 post corner, nothing. It was all short underneath, and everything's just playing forwards for the defense. They're able to break downhill. Check downs are getting hit for one-yard gains the whole time. So um, this will be interesting to see. Uh, I should mention, I like Bryce Young. You're always rooting for guys to be successful, particularly guys who seem like they're upstanding young men like Bryce. So, um, you know, any any, any criticism or, or analysis here is not meant to be a negative, and I'm certainly rooting for him to be successful. But um, we'll work through it. Again, I've only seen the film once, so I'll just kind of give you a conscious stream of thought here. Um, first time through it, I, I didn't look at the stats, but it seemed like the running game was actually reasonably effective, which which, which kind of surprised me. Um, because you would think with a reasonably effective running game, you'd, you'd be able to, you know, create opportunities in the pass game. Um, yeah, just a little inside zone look, cut back. Tough job for Adam Thielen to help on the back side here. Not great angles on the back side end. Tight end gets his face crossed. Not a great job by the tight end on the left side there. So that cutoff would have helped. But either way, still, a, still, you know, still making a profit. Um, taking a look at this second one, another run play. I noticed thought that they, they, they ran the ball a lot. You know, they, they didn't really, they, they, they definitely, again, just having watched it once, didn't look like they had a lot of faith in, 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 in Bryce Young. It looks like some of their confidence in him had been shot, which is a little bit concerning seeing as it's a new coaching staff. I mean, you could, you could say if it was a second-year coaching staff, you know, that, that they, they, they had a whole season to lose faith in him. But it looks like they've kind of lost faith, faith in what they were doing offensively through one game. Um, so again, trying to figure out why that is. Another, just little inside zone look. Is it inside or is it tight? No, it's, it, it might even be tight. I think it's tight zone even. They're really trying to fit tight here inside, inside. Yeah, center. The center is not trying to overtake here. He's fitting inside. The back's looking to cut in behind it. So who comes free off the edge here? The back's not. Well, you can't run tight zone and not block the defensive end. So maybe I'm wrong. Either a tight zone or inside zone look. Again, still making a profit. So third and two. Third and two in the NFL for most teams is passing down. Passing down here, incomplete. So let's take a look here. Concept they ran, just read and pivot into the backside, right? The back's gonna take the flat or expand and then you get the dig from, from the tight end there or from whoever's lined up in that reduced tight end look, even if he's gonna get a chip. Kind of an unusual play call for third and two, personally. Um, they've got this stick here to the field with a, a go and a post. So they had something take them into the boundary on third and two. Not a normal third and two call, but that's okay. You can call, you know, please you're comfortable with. I don't mean that as a criticism, just not one that I would have expected. Um, looking at Bryce Young's footwork here, I'm not sure he's super comfortable with the timing on this play. He's not taking a drop. He's just kind of shuffling back. Not to be rude, it almost looks like a kid, you know, playing flag football where the timing doesn't match. He takes two, sh you know, what is it, two shuffles on the way back, two shuffles forwards and delivers. So not super clean on the timing. Does he have a window here? We've got an outside leverage player. When he's choosing to throw this ball right now, you can see the corner is outside leverage at the top end of the screen right there. Good play by the corner. Good drive, or the DB, whatever that is. Good drive on it. Not a great throw. The ball could have been put out a little bit more in front. Tight window there. So, not the end of the world. But Again, throwing it underneath. I'm going to skip the when the Chargers are on offense. Just looking at Panthers' offensive plays here. All right, so he gets a little more spread out here. Ten personnel on first down. I like that. Passing game. A lot of two high looks this year in the NFL, as everyone's been talking about. Swing. Down block. Yeah, not a lot going on there. I'm okay with the first down call. I like the you know early first down calls here, getting easy completions. Not a great block on the perimeter here. This is a mistake that a lot of teams make. You know, they've, they've got a tight end here. 
who is going to block in, um, block down on that defender. And a lot of teams think that, well, if we put the tight end on the outside, he's going to have an advantage in the blocking game because he's bigger. And I find that that's not necessarily true. With some tight ends, it is, absolutely. But for other guys, and I, I don't know you know, the Panthers' tight end particularly well. I, I know just from having watched the film that number zero was, was playing some tight end for them. I'll have to look up who that is, to be quite honest. Um, but I've noticed that you know a lot of those bigger tight ends out in open space, they, they're, they're not as good just because they're not as quick laterally, and it's a little harder for them to, you know, to, to make that play. So his guy actually makes the tackle here. Um, either way, positive play on first down. That's always nice. All right, that's easy. All right, does this look meant to be a inside zone look here? You know, make it look like wide zone, run inside zone. Getting into 12 personnel, double tight. Yeah, just kind of an inside zone look there. Nothing unusual. Looking at the backside end, the backside end is hesitating. He's not, he's, you know, the backside defensive end is not driving on this, coming flat down the line of scrimmage. He's, he's kind of hesitating until he knows the back has the ball. You know, he, he is in position right now that if he sees the quarterback boot, he could potentially still play that, and he's not flat to the back. He's there now, and maybe you could have got outside, but he definitely is. He's hanging a hair, um, which might be all he needs to blow up, you know, the boot stuff, which we'll, I'm sure we'll see as the game goes on. That's definitely a, a crutch for a lot of young quarterbacks is how do they – you know, how do you create completions? Well, it's off the boot game, so they're not having to throw just straight from the pocket. All right, so now we get third and five. Definitely passing down in the NFL. Concept to the top. We're getting the in from three, and then delayed in from from who becomes the two after the switch. Now he's available. You know, Adam Thielen's available here for the first down. That little stop right there, right? Most most teams out of this bunch really common is to get him in and then whip him back out. So you can see Adam Thielen step in, make it look like he's going to work out, and then bounce back in. And he creates space. That should be a completion. Um, it looks like because they're singled up backside and man coverage, that's where Bryce Young wants to go with the ball. But he's got outside leverage there. right? There's outside leverage. And that's a little bit confusing as well because the outside leverage from the corner would have made me think there was going to be a robber in the middle of the field, and there's not. So I could see why that was a little bit confusing and the fact that that receiver is going to bounce out means that he wouldn't throw that. So I, I can see where they got a little bit mixed up on that one, right? That outside leverage corner in, in cover one down here at the bottom should be indicating a rat or a robber in the middle. And the Chargers don't give one. So when this guy's route is a whip out, it's not just continuing in. You know, Bryce Young doesn't have anywhere to go with the ball. I, I, I think in man, personally, I'd like to see the rubs and the picks coming out of the bunch. I think you're more likely to create separation, but it, it, it's not the end of the world to think you could just separate at the bottom one-on-one. -on -one. That, that's, that's fine. All right, well, no need to take a sack like that on that one. At the very least here. I mean, you're just, you're just losing seven yards right now. That's not good. <laughs> um... You know, again, my, my other impression on this game was Bryce Young just physically looks a little bit overmatched. He's small. You know, his, his arm strength didn't pop off the screen. And even when you see young quarterbacks, um, you know, have rough games, which is going to happen. You know, young QBs are, are going to struggle at times. You know, I did one on Caleb Williams a couple weeks ago where, you know, he struggled, no doubt about it. But there's still some throws that pop off the screen. I haven't seen Bryce really have a play that popped off the screen as, as, as wow, that dude, you know, he's, he's we need to get more of that out of him here. I mean, this is... This is struggling again. My my first impression watching him on film was he didn't he didn't do a great job knowing where the pocket was or where his openings are. Obviously, in this case, the pocket completely collapsed, and he did a good job being an athlete. But out there, he just gets shellacked for no reason. Should have gotten rid of that ball, thrown it away, something. When you're small, you you got to try to avoid taking those hits. To be honest. All right, backed up. You would imagine this would be a run play in this situation. Yep. Not a bad fit. I'd like to see the back continue back here, but I can see the, the lineman getting chucked kind of changes his decision there. All right, second and eight, counter. Again, not a lot for Bryce Young to do on that one. All right, third and four, again, passing down from four by one. 
trying to play with the numbers here. Man, that's not a good throw, to be honest. That throw was low. He's making his receiver dive to the floor for that. I mean, he missed the block anyway, so if it's a good throw, the receiver gets whacked. But Bryce Young didn't know that when he threw the ball. All right, this ball gets thrown right now. He should be comfortable throwing this thing. Um, I have to be honest. It's also an unusual play call. This is an unusual play design. With the outside guy working out and then expecting him to reach that corner... That's kind of a, a strange. You would have thought you would do it a different way, like run this guy in the bubble so you have better angles down the field or look to kick him out so that he can slip inside of it. You wouldn't expect him to just be working for width. That's kind of an unusual play design. I'm not I'm not entirely sure where that comes from because, like, the, the number two receiver here doesn't really have a good shot at this guy. Like, he does not have an angle to go block this guy running an out, so... That's a, that's a tough one. Not a good throw from Bryce, though. This is not a, this is not a good throw. This is... This is an easy throw that's way low and, and you know, unforced error on that one. Not that it ended up mattering anyway, but... Alright, like seeing some throws on first down. Bryce sees the guy coming free off the edge and looks to get rid of it. I'm okay with that. Right, like, you got a, you got a free hitter off the edge here. The way the scheme is being run. He's got to jump to get it over him, which I'm sure some people found humor in, but you know, ultimately that, that's effective. But this seemed to be such a high percentage of their throws, though, was these little check downs and dump offs and stuff. Um, again, first time through was a lot of that. All right, another schemed completion. I like seeing the schemed completion to the young quarterbacks. You know, just letting them get a screen and some cheap yards, early completions to give them feeling, you know, a little bit of feel of rhythm there and stuff. We're good for that one. We are starting to get to the point now. We're on play 40, and I know I'm not watching the Chargers plays, but you know, we're 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 two drives in now, and we have not seen the Panthers throw the ball down the field more than about seven yards yet. It's starting to. It's starting to show a little bit here that they're not throwing the ball down the field. And as a defense, you start playing downhill on everything. Right, that, that's problematic. All right, so concept here. We've got the short out. We've got just snag, right, the short out, the, the, the slant with the stop, and then the corner. Nothing wrong there. Again, it's just kind of a very unaggressive call, which I'm okay with easy completions, but we're getting a lot of two, three-yard completions, one-yard completions right now. Um, again, looking at Bryce Young's footwork, this would just be an easy rhythm throw. We see him kind of skating back a little bit. Not super clean. The timing's correct. Left foot, right foot. He's getting ready to throw. Ah, it's not that bad, actually. Right rhythm throw off the punch. I'll take that. It's an unusual call on third and seven, whatever that was. All right, run play here, split zone kick down the middle. Yeah, this is this is, this is they've been pretty effective in the run game. Like this was kind of a, a normal occurrence here. Like these are good fits up front. That's nice. Now, personally, I love this. Not the fact that he throws a pick, because obviously I've labeled it on the top there that he's about to throw a pick. I love this that they got a positive play and then they went empty and tried to stay aggressive on it. I hope that's what's about to happen. I, I labeled it interception. I don't remember what happens here. Oh, that's not good. Now, see how that, that safety is never threatened. Like the, the, the pick comes from, from this safety here, right? That safety is never really threatened vertically, and he is breaking downhill in this. He's able to get a spot. That happened later in the game. There was one that I noticed where the corner was just not did not feel threatened vertically at any point and broke downhill on it. Even if you're not going to complete those vertical passes, you got to take a couple of them just to just to force DBs to actually even get into a backpedal right here. Um, as far as the read goes, I mean, I like the fact that we were able to throw with some anticipation right here. Like he makes the decision right now that he's going to throw to this to this guy here, knowing that he's going to work inside of the will backer. So like you love seeing that anticipation. That was one of the things that you know coming out of college, people said Bryce has was the ability to play with anticipation on the routes and windows and stuff and. You know, kind of that timing-based accuracy, you know. So that that part of it's good. 
the actual decision-making process because the guy he needs to be keying the safety is not really getting into a back pedal. Nothing's threatening them vertically. And I think that's only partially on Bryce and partially on where the team's philosophy has put them so far this year. You know, first and 10. I mean, per, okay, as I, as I actually start to look at this, we got a hitch on the outside. We got to dig on the inside, right? We're, we're running a, a kind of modified pivot levels concept, like a pivot switch concept right here. The outside right now, the will does not work for any width. We should just be throwing the hitch and rhythm right now. This ball should be actually out here. This is... His, his timing on this particular throw is good. I'm not sure the read and decision is good, right? Like right now, you've got a safety over the top, and you've got a quarter here for the, uh, for the, the corner as well. We're just reading off the will. If the will expands, then you expect to throw this inside of him. If the will tries to wall too, then there's no one to help underneath on that, and you got to take your easy access throw. So I would have thrown the ball to Chuba Hubbard personally. That's what I would like to see at least. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a big believer in the read. Now, I don't know. I'm not in the room, obviously, with them when they make their decisions as to how they're going to read this. So you, know, it, uh, you don't know what Bryce has been told. But to me, you know, from an outsider's eye, that's, that's what I would have expected. Um, all right, run, split zone again. Again, you're seeing good fits here. Like the last, the first play of the last drive was an 11-yard run. The first play of this drive is an 8-yard run. Like you're getting some good fits here in the run game. All right, cover four, look. There's five. I mean, it looks messy, but it's a, it's a clean five right there. That's good blocks, good leverage. Like, you know, for, for as, as much as they're struggling in the pass game, they still look reasonably effective in the run game, which is really a testament to, to the, the Panthers, you know, whatever you want to call it, their run blocking, their, their run scheme. It looks pretty good. Okay. So let's see what this scheme is. We've got the backside vertical singled up. Might have been okay with that one. To the front side, we got three over three plus a safety and a hole player. So we really should not be reading the three over three side right now, right? Let's think about this. We got three over three, safety over the top of it. You got a wall player here, and this safety works backside as well. So realistically, we got to be working over here, right? However you read this play, like again, I don't know what read rules and movement keys Bryce has been given, but there's not a lot of plays that would indicate to me that he should be reading to the field side right here, right? He ends up with his eyes to the right. I mean, and you can see all the defenders playing downhill and everything. You know, you see those checkdowns and running backs turn around and pick up five or eight yards. Saw a lot of checkdowns in this game where the checkdown got whacked the moment they hit, caught the ball, which tells us that no one's getting threatened vertically and they're able to play, the defense is able to play everything forwards. I would have liked to have seen a shot at the boundary here and just taking that vertical and giving 15 a chance. Personally, that's that's what I would have liked to have seen there. If I'm, again, if I'm the guy calling plays. Again, another short check down. This is the second play in a row that they've thrown the ball to Chuba Hubbard. All right, let's take a look at what the passing concept is before I just watch Bryce. Okay, they're they're leaving the tight end and the protection on the far side. Back side, they've got the, the, the dig coming in, so the front side concept here is hmm, fade out. Yeah, there's not really anywhere to go with this ball. Checking it down was the right decision here. Tough. Like, you don't want to run this, this, this concept at the bottom where they're running a takeoff and an out. Adam Thielen's converting it to a sit. Because there's a hard corner in the flat there. There's no access, so he's got to sit it down. But the Sam, you know, the, the, the linebacker expanding to our side, that curled defender is, is in the way there. And then to the backside, you, know, you, got, you, got a, you got an issue here too when you got four playing one, right? So the check down is, is the right decision there. I'm down for that one, and this would have been, you know, their biggest passing play to, to this point. Unfortunately, looks like they got a penalty there. So now we're in second and 19. Again, short throw, and then the whole defense is able to play downhill in it. So to the bottom here, what do we have? We've got the short out and the... Uh, we got hitch comeback, right? We got a hitch from two, comeback from one. Right here, this is, this is a good read. 
remember we talked about it before, if, if, if we've got two high players and we're running two things underneath, right, whether it's comeback, things that try to get completed underneath these two high defenders, all we need to do is read off the will here, right? The will expands to the flat right now. We see him get out, right, which means we should be throwing the inside guy so let's take a look at Bryce Young's footwork here and see, is he on time? Is this what, or is he a little bit late here? So I'm going to say he's late. He's definitely late on this. And that's part of the reason why the safety is able to drive downhill on this for so long. It's the safety who's downhill on this. Look at the safety drop all the way into the hole here. Like he's keying through number two, right? He's taking his steps. You know, they're getting a four. He's settling, right? So they can play cover four. The moment he stops, the safety is able to come downhill He's able to make this tackle for, you know, a four-yard gain. So let's take a look at Bryce Young's timing here, right? If we're going to throw a hitch, it's got to be either a punch drop or three-step in rhythm. He's taking a punch step, then a three, then another hitch and stutter, and now he's delivering. So he is uncomfortable throwing this ball. This is a very easy read, but you can tell just by watching him. He, he looks almost uncertain at the back of his drop. So I'd like to see that ball come out a little sooner and give the receiver a little bit more time. We're being nitpicky, but... You know, that's kind of the nature of, of, of what we're doing right now based on the fact that, you know, he's gotten, unfortunately, benched. So it's third and 15. Offensive concept is, again, only a, a three-man route here until the, the two check guys release. So it ends up being five late, but it's initially just three guys. And what's the play here? Is it going to be deep curl to the left? And then to the right here, we've got dagger. So dagger... It could be okay here. Let's try to clear out. Yeah, that safety doesn't clear out here, that, that hole player, right? We can see the way that they're exchanging, right? He's going to roll high. These guys are going to drop down, right? It makes sense on third and 19. You're going to put these guys right at the stick. So as you try to run the dagger concept with that in cut, you try to run the curl, you've got guys sitting on that waiting for it at the stick. So, you know, that makes sense. This was not a, a high percentage play, to be honest, you know, to call. This was, this was a, a, a little bit... Um, a little bit too on the head to, to expect it to work. So he's really got nothing left to do but to check it down. But again, we're still seeing they have not thrown the ball over anyone yet. Everything is underneath. Everything is, is short. Everything is, is coming back to the quarterback. Um, okay, I'm sure they like this. We said they're going to come back to that naked, that boot. They actually block the end here for at least a little bit to funnel him inside to give... Bryce the opportunity to get outside, which makes sense. And then once he releases, he's wide open. That's nice. That's that's pretty common in today's NFL. Ten yard gain. Love those for the young quarterbacks. Motion going away to four helps because now the corner solo on the backside. When he gets a vertical release from Thielen, who is the number one, that means there's no one on the tight end. Actually, it shouldn't be solo because there's two here. But it looks like it's solo for some reason, so... No, but all, all, all good for, for Bryce here. All right, run, again, they got great run fits here. Look at this. Every time they run the ball, they're, they're ripping off chunks here. Right? This is, this is good. This is good stuff. they got to leverage this into some of the play-action stuff. Like, legit under-center play-action shots right now. Right? Look at the, the reaction of the linebackers. If they react right now to coming down, you've got voids you know, in behind them here. You know, that's where Tom Brady and Gronk made a living. We want to give some of that advantage to, you know, to Bryce. Instead of just running dagger like they did on that previous third down play, run play action dagger from under center. Another nice run fit. Well, didn't end up bad. I thought it was going to be better than that, but still not terrible. And you got a big hole. I'd like to see 72 come off of that a little bit sooner so we can get down to that second level, the guy who ends up making the tackle. Decent run fit going left. Gain of two. So you're going to third and five. You're going to put him in passing down again. All right, let's see here. So their concept now is... Oh, boy. See, that? this is where this is where they get scared. I think this is the play I was referring to before. Well, that corner... Right now, that receiver is running straight at him, and he is not scared at all. He is downhill. He knows his ball is breaking at the sticks. He knows the Panthers have no intention of trying to throw the ball over anyone's head. Like this ball could be picked off, right? The, 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 the corner knows the route here. He knows they're going to run an out route at the sticks, 
and I'm able to break downhill, I have no concern about getting hit on this one. I mean, look what they do with the middle safety here. Look at this. Like, this is cover zero. There is no safety middle of the field. It's man on the outside. This is zero on third and five. You know, I mean, this is something where, where you'd want to see you being able to take advantage of cover zero, not make it look like cover zero is going to turn into a pick. I tell you, it's a really good job with the Panthers' offensive line in front of picking up the blitz here, too. Like, no one comes free. He's free in the nice, clean pocket right now. This is, this is, this is a really good job by a lot of guys on the Panthers. And his footwork looks uncomfortable. He doesn't really follow through on the throw here. Watch, he's kind of stuttering on the way back. When he throws, he, he hangs himself back. He looks like he's leaning. He just doesn't look comfortable. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't look comfortable playing right now. All right, there's the run fit again. We're just going to run inside zone on the right. Yep, fit, fit. Good job. Second and seven, not the worst thing in the world. Ooh, boy. Okay. Yeah, tough, tough assignment there. When they get the motion and that guy is going to come off the edge, that, that kind of check to blitz look, when the motion goes away, that's, uh, that's occasionally problematic, um, which is what they get right here. So Bryce, always been a good athlete, gets out of that. Uh, he's, got, he's got a dude open. He's got to connect on this pass. This this in the NFL needs to be a completion, right? He's got space now that he beat the end. And now when he gets the throw, he doesn't get turned around to his target. He gets his hand underneath it, and the ball floats high. Again, this 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 is completed by 9 out of 10 NFL quarterbacks. This is a throw that he should have made. You can see, again, when he throws it, just thinking about it mechanically, he doesn't get himself all the way turned to it. His left shoulder is left early, and as he goes to throw, his hand is underneath the ball a little bit too much because he's too far open to it, and that just sends it floating. That's not a, that's not a good throw. Okay, this one I noted the first time through. This was kind of an unforced error here where, first of all, it's third and seven. Okay, you're looking at the, the slip screen look at the top here, right? That top receiver is trying to make it look like slip screen or in, you know, in cut, whatever you want to call it. It's not slip screen, it's an in cut. I mean, this is the open receiver right here. That's the first down ball, right? That's where that one should have been going. Right to the boundary, we've got the, the back and the flat and then the deep out. So what you're doing here on the play design is you're trying to clear out these two defenders to the sideline by sending the back and the tight end to the out, and then you're replacing it into the middle of the field right here, right? And that's what they get. He locks, he locks, they chase, they chase, and now he works across the field. That's where the ball, I think, was intended to go. And it looks like Bryce Young is looking at trying to isolate here. But with this guy playing off, I'm not sure that that's a likely proposition. Now, as far as him maneuvering the pocket here, it's also an unforced error. Right, he's looking weak here. It's not where he wants it. There's no need for him to escape this way. It's obvious to step up into the pocket that way. I'm not sure what brought him to that conclusion, but I, I get the feeling that he's definitely a little skittish on pressure. Honestly, it reminds me a little bit of Sam Darnold when he was still with the Jets, and he had said he was seeing ghosts after a game. I think Bryce Young, perhaps, and I haven't broken down any of his rookie year, to be fair, but if he got beaten up his rookie year, it definitely looks like he's... He's uncomfortable in the pocket. He does not look comfortable. And he, sh he shouldn't feel that way because, all things considered, the Panthers' offensive line is doing a good job. They pass off the switch here. They've got a good block here. They've got a good block here. If he just stands up in the pocket, right up, right up, we've got space and we can complete that ball to that, you know, the Adam Thielen down the hash like we saw from the sideline view. So, again, kind of an unforced error on that one. Okay, run. That didn't work.
Okay, not a great run fit on that one. Turn that phone off. All right, so we get into a second and 13. They're going to run the ball again here. And Bryce looks like he's already kind of out of it. He hands his ball off, and he's just kind of standing there. He's not. So we're in third and nine. Again, everything's underneath. We're running double slants from the boundary right now. Everything's underneath, and the defense every, they're able to play everything forwards. Again, Bryce, Bryce's footwork looks very uncomfortable here. Right, he doesn't look like he's taking a drop. He's just kind of shuffling back and then throwing. And this, I mean, normally you would read the double ins from inside out. So the ball should have been on that guy first. The ball could have been a little bit sooner. Right, we're going to play a 116, and we still have not seen them throw the ball vertically. I don't think we've seen a pass... A pass beyond 10 yards. That might be the longest completion so far. Now you see what's different here compared to the previous time we saw double slants is he throws off a punch drop. Left foot, right foot, balls out. This was a much more confident footwork look from Bryce. Not the same look and coverage, so it's not necessarily comparable that way, but in terms of his delivery, this was much better than the previous rep that we watched on the double slant concept. We like double slants versus too high. All we got to do is read off the will. Right here we can see the will is lined up over Adam Thielen. And as the will stays directly over him and Adam Thielen runs the in cut, this is the right read. The ball's thrown on time. This is just positive quick game, but it's also something that most NFL teams would take for granted, being able to execute the quick game stuff. So, All right, first and ten. Concept of the top three receivers, they're rolling there. They're, they're, they're throwing a vertical concept here, right? They've got seam post from two and three, right? They've got the outbreaker from the outside guy at the boundary here to the low side of the screen. But the corner can play outside leverage because they're rolling a three, and he's got inside help from the linebacker in the yellow shoes. So he's, he's playing with outside leverage in this case. So that didn't that wouldn't have worked. Up at the top there we get curl, buzz. Yeah, I mean you gotta check it down here, I guess. There's really nowhere nowhere else. I'm just talking through the concept here just to see, you know, what should he or could he have been reading in this situation. Knowing that they're losing here towards the end of the game. I don't think he's got anywhere else to go with the ball, so that's what it is. And you can see again the defense has not been stressed vertically. He checks it down and they gain a yard. You know, the defense is able to play everything facing forwards. They're never having to turn. So, sure, run fit. All right, third and two. Oh, my goodness. That is not a good throw. So they've got the bubble here on third and two, and they're trusting him on third and two to get this ball out. And this is not a, this is not going to be his best play. Like, you can't imagine, uh, realistically, I'm not trying to take shots at, Bryce Young, like, he's obviously a great quarterback. There's a reason why he was the first overall pick. But can you imagine Bryce Young making this throw when he was at Alabama? I, I can't. I, I, I would say he completes that ball 10 out of 10 if he's at Alabama. I, I just think he feels so uncomfortable back there, whether it's because he's uncomfortable in the new system or uncomfortable because of his first year he got, you know, beaten up a little bit. Um, this just seems like a very uncomfortable throw. You know, to, to miss a bubble by this much. That's not good. All right, fourth and two. Single up the back. Yeah, there it is. Now they take the singled up back side, right? We've said they've been shifting pretty hard over to that three receiver side, so they take the singled up back side versus man. That's good. That's what we wanted. And on fourth and two, this is a good play. Punch, balls out. You know, this one looks a little more confident than the play before Left foot, right foot, ball's on time, it's out, bang, like that. You know, the quick game rhythm stuff looks like that's been his best friend, but their drop back stuff, you know, the regular straight drop back, they haven't thrown the ball down the field yet, kind of putting him at a disadvantage. And we haven't seen a lot of concepts that have tried to send the ball down the field, to be honest. You know, that, that's kind of what I was interested to see. Um, okay, let's see here. They've got... Out whip to the field with the pivot and to the boundary here. 
they've got the fade out. I mean, there's not there's not a lot to go off of here. I don't know where you go with that ball. I mean, you I mean, okay, let me go back. I know where you go with the ball. You go to the three receiver side here because right now you've got two linebackers tucked in the box. You've got the two high look. Here's your overhang to the two receiver side. So you would think this two receiver side, especially with the back rele releasing there, that's where your numbers are, right? So I would imagine the read is supposed to take him there. Right, he should be reading something like low to out and then the back. So realistically, it should have been the short is not there, the high is not there. Now check it down to the back. So, I mean, I would have liked to have seen the ball go there and go. But the point is these receiver concepts, there's, there's really not much available for him to work off of right now. So, again, good job being athletic, making a play. Okay, spin to cover three, but it's a run fit. Same side counter. Ooh, we missed the trap. Okay, too high. Playing six. Good and fits. I mean, playing six, you want to run the ball, right? This should be this should be effective. So. All right, so here we get some vertical stems from receivers here to the to the near side. What do we get? Seam out. Yeah, we get seam deep out, right? I'd be okay with that one. I'd actually like to see him throw the deep out if he's reading the bottom of the screen here. As long as it's on time, that should be there because we actually get the corner to flip his hips on this one, and the seam is carrying the 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 slot defender, right? So I'd like to see him throw the deep out. This ball could be completed right there. Right, that's what we'd like to see. Now to the top of the screen here, we'll see the concept. We get seam bender, right? So we get a bender from two. You know, this one's good coverage in here. We can't go there. He might be looking at the bender right now, but I'm not sure I'd like that with the way that safety's creeping over the top of it right now. And the, you know, the two linebackers are standing in the way. So he escapes We throw it away. Yeah, again, I don't know what in his rules takes him to one side of the field or the other, but I would have liked to have seen him throw the near side, that seam out in that particular instance. All right, so we're 3-by-1 to this side, but they've still got this safety weak here, which means I'd like to see him work the three-receiver side here. They're running screen to the other side. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much control he has at the line of scrimmage, and I don't know... Um, how comfortable you know the new coach is there, Coach Canales. I don't I don't know how comfortable he is giving that control or some of these auto checks in. But realistically, if I was going to run a screen week, normally you're accounting for the will. You're not accounting for a safety rolling week against trips away from trips. So that guy is unaccounted for in this blocking scheme right now. He just comes free and makes the tackle. So if if I'm if I'm Coach Canales right now, I've got to tell myself, well, one of two people has to change this play. It's either got to be Bryce Young. Or it's got to be me, right? We shouldn't we, we shouldn't be having this issue, right? We, we just ran a screen into an unblocked defender. Someone's got to be making the check here. And we've got numbers to the field, right? We've got one high with two low. Well, if we're running like a sale concept or something where we get him, run the out, and run the out, I mean, we've got opportunities to the field here. So I, I think that was a wasted opportunity. Safety doesn't actually end up making the tackle, but... All right, so it's second and 23. Looks like there was a penalty on that play. Two by two. Looks like they're doing that thing where they drop the two safeties down, drop the other one to the middle. So they're playing that cover four with a middle helper or whatever. It's cover three with the invert, you know, whatever you want to call it. The player, oh boy, he's going to get whacked. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, right? They're going to they're gonna drop one safety deep, deep up these two safeties down as the hook players and, and bail the three. Sorry, not four. I think I said four before. Bail the three. Um... And Bryce Young hasn't figured that one out yet. You know, like, this is not the first time. We've seen that a couple of times now. We've seen it normally in relation to the sticks. I think we talked about it on a one play earlier, but uh, he's, getting his, he's getting his guy whacked here. So the concepts here... So let's see what we see right now. If we're looking to the far side of the field, we're getting an out and a post. If the overhang player is going to take the out, we've got to think post... And that safety is flat-footed, right? He does not really get into much of a backpedal here. 
See right now, well, I take that back. He's back. Right now he's settling. And it might be because he sees Bryce throwing the ball, but you know, I might be thinking skinny post might be an option right here if that safety's gonna settle. And in the boundary, they're running uh, switch smash here, right? Short out from two and then out, you know, deep corner from one after the inside stem, which he has to bend off flat. So there's not really any, anywhere to go with the ball. I think part of the takeaway here is that there hasn't been a lot of stuff outside for Bryce Young to throw to. You know, there are some opportunities missed that we've talked about, but a lot of this, you know, we're seeing covered guys on simple concepts. Third and 19, empty. Imagine that safety is going to drop in, right, so they can play three. And they're, they're third and 19. I'm, so I'm assuming they're calling this four down territory. Third and 19, they're running the double in cut. Now, you don't, don't normally want to run double ins versus one high because they should have an extra player there. Right, but because there's no middle player, they've got three over here. I guess it does give you numbers over here. If you're going to throw the double slant, I'd rather here not give the corner a shot, and I'd rather check off to a more a more guaranteed completion. Like imagine if you ran him off and just threw him the bubble. Like to me, that's the easier completion. Right now, you're running into the defense and taking away what was a guaranteed completion because the pre-snap numbers for the defense are so far off. So I think they made the life, them, their lives hard on themselves. Now, again, I should also say this is a lot easier for me to say on film than it is for a coach to say watching it live. You know, that's a, the two, two completely different conversations. So, you know, anytime you go through a game, there's going to be calls that you miss. So it's third and 19 here. Obviously, the defense is way deep. They're dropping those safeties in as the hook players again. And they basically just throw straight into those two hook players. They buzz. Concept here is in, fade, fade, short out. Yeah, there's not, not really much to go off of there. All right, play 137, four by one of the field. Again, defense just playing downhill and everything. They still have not thrown the ball over the top of anything. Right, they're getting this four look. They're not throwing it. I think he's late coming around to this, to be honest. He's taking too many steps looking at it. Like, the speed out to the boundary here, to our side, should just be punch drop. Left foot, right foot, and you know whether or not you want this right now. Right? Do you want to throw this? If he decides no, now he takes an extra step back, an extra step back, now he throws. He's late coming back to this check down, and that check down's not really open, right? Because realistically, you're running the double hitch swing concept. And this guy doesn't follow the hitch in, so you really can't throw that swing. I have a feeling that what should have happened is right now should have been punch. I don't like the out. One hitch. The ball is supposed to go to Adam Thielen right now. And it's going to be a five-yard gain instead of one. It's still not a big play, but yeah, definitely a... Again, uncomfortable look for him footwork-wise. Okay, second and nine complete. Bailing with a hole player. Tampa player, so to speak, right? They're going to bail, bail, and the Tampa player... The
complete mirrored stick with the whole defense facing.